If you're interested in healthcare, you've probably heard of clinical studies, and you might know they're done to find out if experimental treatments are safe and effective. When experts talk about clinical studies, you'll hear expressions like double-blind, comparative, multi-centre or adaptive, and maybe also study arms, statistical significance, bias, interim analysis and above all, outcomes. Complicated stuff. What's it all about? Clinical studies are designed to answer specific scientific questions. For example, what side effects does a new drug have? Does it reverse or stop the disease it's designed to treat? Is it more effective than existing treatments? Can it be given alongside other drugs that are used for the same disease? In each case, the answer must come in the form of scientific data, not the impressions or opinions of the doctors or patients involved. These can be influenced by many factors which could bias the results. Studies are set up so as to make sure this doesn't happen. For a start, most studies are comparative. Half the patients get the experimental drug, the others get a standard treatment or a placebo, a mock-up that has no medicinal action. Most comparative studies are performed under double-blind conditions. Neither the patients nor the doctors know who's getting which drug or the placebo. So the two treatments must look exactly alike and the patients entering the study are randomised, assigned on a purely random basis to one of the groups or arms of the study. The answers to most study questions lie in the statistical differences between the results obtained for each patient group. To ensure that enough data is gathered to answer the questions properly, a study must include the appropriate number of patients. How many this is depends on the questions being asked. This is why many studies involve several hospitals. These multi-centre trials ensure adequate data as well as helping to safeguard objectivity. Even before a study is completed, enough data may have been collected to allow an interim analysis of its progress. This may lead to changes in the study, such as modifications to the dosage, number of patients or patient selection criteria. Studies set up to allow such changes are called adaptive studies. A well-designed study always provides an answer to the initial question. That's the study outcome. The answer may be positive or negative. The drug may or may not achieve its intended therapeutic effect. Either way, if the answer is clear and has a solid foundation in data, the study has been successful. Both positive and negative studies give researchers ideas about which direction to try next. A negative study is not a failed study, it's a reminder that there's more work to do.